Oh, that's going to be a problem. Magic Smoke is being released. Hello, today I am building a project to assist with making videos. I want a box to be able to more safely crank up the testing on some power adapters and various other products. The basic reasoning behind this is pretty simple. I want to prevent the power adapter or capacitor or other protective circuit element to explode, arc, or cause other damage to equipment or personnel outside the box. I want to be able to get video footage of this though, and that becomes more difficult as power levels increase. This isn't a perfect solution, but it's a step up versus doing it in open air with my face right in the action. There are several precautions, and I'll be looking to you for input on how to improve things. I am going to create a list of goals, find some appropriate products, assemble those products, and finally do a test to validate the process is working and containing things. The idea here is to be more safe, and just in case it goes sideways, I want an extra layer of protection between me and the dangerous side. There is an affiliate link down in the description, as well as a list of products I used for this project. These earn me a couple percent, but if you are buying from the same place anyway, won't cost you any more. There is a link to my Patreon as well. Special thanks to patrons and channel supporters. On with the show. Okay, what are the goals today? Well, one, we need to find an enclosure. Two, we need to find some lights. There are some specific requirements for videography that I will get into. And I need to find a suitable dimmer or adjustment system. And this also has some specific requirements. We need to find a power supply, because something needs to make it go. I need to put it all together and make sure it works. And this is going to be it for the first round of design. And I'm sure some future modifications will be required. All right, first up, find a box. The box needs to have a see-through cover. The box needs to be big enough for some experiments. The box should be rugged enough for small objects to explode and collect the debris without breaking. An electrical enclosure is probably a good choice. The one I wanted was from Bud Industries, and it is probably a good choice. It's a big box. Probably a little too big, but it's moderately priced and it's available from a lot of places, so I'm in. Of course, I didn't do that. I went on eBay and got a used one and ended up with a DSE enclosure. So, made in Korea instead. It was too cheap to pass up. America's too expensive. Okay, next up is finding some lights. Finding some lights that meet some basic criteria, this is a whole process on its own. There are heaps and heaps of cheap LEDs on the market. There are good cheap LEDs, but the big things that matter are the CRI needs to be very good. That is the color rendering index. This makes sure that colors look vibrant and correct. The light strip needs to be color temperature adjustable. This is important to be able to match it to the camera settings, the white balance, and the other lights in the, I'm gonna call this a studio, but it's more like a cave mixed with a labyrinth. Anyway, the LED light strip I ended up going with is already unavailable, of course, but look for a high CRI, look for the two-tone color temperature setup if you wanna be able to tune that color temperature. Okay, now the hardest part of this process. Finding an LED controller that isn't going to be a complete piece of absolute garbage. It can be something simple, and it has to do one very important thing. For video work, it absolutely cannot flicker on camera. You are just gambling when you buy one of these. I searched for a while, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I never found anything that matched what I was looking for, so finally I just decided to pick one. I ended up getting this one, and in tiny small print it says it doesn't flicker, and it does the multicolor temperature I'm looking for. We'll check that out later on. Okay, last, and as viewers of this channel know, certainly our priority is the power supply. Okay, so I just picked a power supply. Again, this was an insanely complicated task. I just wanted two things, but you know what information you can't find anywhere about power supplies? Two things. Do they have a safety listing, and do they have power factor correction? Well, almost none of them have the latter for the cheapies, but I did find one that at least has a safety listing, so I went with that. Open frame, there are options, but I want an enclosed model with a barrel plug for easy disconnection. Of course, I plugged it in and checked it out a little. The idle power consumption looks okay. No power factor correction though, so this is getting a skip from me. This is where I need the audience's help. Does anyone know of a better 24 volt DC power supply that has power factor correction? It has to have this through more than at least half of the range, and has an appropriate safety listing. This one is functional, but it is missing that main feature I am looking for. Okay, time to get this stuff onto the bench and test it out and see what it all does. The LED tape comes on a reel, no surprises there. It smells terrible, maybe that's why they pulled it from the market. Lots of chemicals. 
Who knows? Anyway, too late now. Time to breathe deep. Good thing once the tape is on, I can close the lid. They do give some instructions for this, like take it off the reel before you turn it on. I've got stories of that. I melted a hole in my desk once. Whoops. I'm going to need a couple pieces of wire and an adapter too. Take your pick here. The wire is just stuff I had laying around. Time to add some ferrules to these wires. This helps keep the wires together and prevent strays from poking out and causing something like a short circuit. Also, it's a fun, simple tool to use. The dimmer comes with some very detailed instructions. It looks like this is covering several different models, but the one I have is the one with the warm white and cold white connections. There are some dip switches that set the PWM frequency. You need to make sure to set this to the higher frequency to reduce visible flicker on camera. The fact is, is this is still flickering. It's just that it can't see it. The wires are too big to fit in the dimmer. Ugh, really? Who designs these things? It's supposed to be able to do 10 amps and a 16 gauge wire is too big? Not a surprise that this stuff catches on fire and breaks all the time. Well, time to crush the ferrule to make it fit. Ah, much better. Slides right in now, with force. You know, this whole project I haven't cut myself once. I'm proud of myself. Once it's plugged in and working, I can play with the dimming settings to see if there's any visible flicker on camera. These LED strips are bright, very bright. Very nice. This might actually work on the first try. Visibly, this thing looks good. Flickering and the color temperatures look good. I think I actually got the correct products and the results I wanted on the first go. I spent hours picking these parts. You can hear a tone at certain dimming levels, particularly at low dimming levels. I need quite a bit of light in any moderate to high intensity settings. I don't hear anything, but just an FYI, if you want to use this in your house at low light levels, you are going to hear it. Next, I need to prep the box. I did this off camera, but the dimmer is installed on the outside of the box right at the edge. Random hardware I had laying around made it attach. The LED tape is going to be run around the outside perimeter of the box interior. This will all be used at various heights just to spread the light out inside the box. I am hoping with the phosphor coating on these LEDs being pretty thick, the light will mostly be diffused. Also, with the light source being all around, hopefully it will spread out nicely. I also expect there to be some internal reflection off of the see-through window, and that will also help illuminate the object being abused. I mean filmed. I cut the strip into two sections, so in the future, if I want to change the number of strips in the box, I have that option. Okay, it's all assembled. It's time to turn this thing on and see how it looks. Okay, yeah, this is pretty good. The adjustable light works. The light being all around the perimeter lights up the inside very nice. Filming from the top of the box, and yeah, here's a power adapter in the middle of the box. This looks better than my normal lighting. I wonder how this would do photographing some circuit boards for teardowns. I think it's pretty good. I should be able to get good photos of large circuit boards in this box. Hmm, I think I just gained another use. Okay, time for the part everyone wants to see. Make something break. I'm going to take out a poor capacitor today. This little Rubicon 220 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. Time to find out how it's going to fail. Is it going to pop or is it going to smoke? And which one is cooler? Well, it looks like this one is going to release the magic smoke. I like it though. The video is nice and clear and a very safe failure at least. In terms of the project, exactly what I'm looking for for video and photo use. Some other components I want to check out are MOVs, which are metal oxide varistors. These are protection devices often found in power strips and things which essentially short out transient events. They also tend to get hot and break when they fail, so much safer to apply damaging voltages to these things when in an enclosure. Yeah, it's just a polycarbonate or an ABS case, but it's got a big hole, so pressure isn't going to be allowed to build in the box. Both DSC and BUD have a safety rating for fire, dust, and wind, so maybe those are good things. Yeah, there's a correct way to do this, but oh wow, is it expensive, and it doesn't have any lights. Well, that's about it. It's a big box with some LED lights that have high CRI, color rendering index, and a non-flickering, well, minimally flickering, dimmer. The lights are distributed all around the perimeter of the box, providing a very nice lighting for getting good quality video and maybe some improvements to photos for the teardown bits. I could see this being useful for a lot of things. The see-through window provides some much needed protection for the test equipment, cameras, and me. The importance is in that order too. Protect the meters. The plastic cover does distort the image a tiny amount, but I think this is a very worthwhile trade-off. Another important thing is I can build a safety lockout switch to prevent the high voltage apparatus from being accessible while the cover's open. 
So the part I need some help with is finding a better 24 volt DC power supply that has power factor correction and a safety listing and a barrel plug. This is difficult to find. Also, if it costs $400, that's too much. I don't need medical isolation. If only someone had a database of these things. Yeah, no safety listed or PFC ones I've fallen into. Thanks for watching. Let me know if this project build is useful and what kind of tests you'd like to see in the future. Goodbye.